Vancouver is a world-class city. It's surrounded by incredible natural beauty, has a massive skyline, and is consistently ranked as a top five city in the world for quality of life. I visited the city several years ago and was thoroughly impressed by it. In this series, I briefly cover a city's history, population, skyline, as well as a few things that make it unique. Now, let's meet Vancouver. I always like to start by exploring how a city wound up being where it is today. Vancouver is located on the west coast of Canada between the Fraser River and the Burrard Inlet. The area had been inhabited by several First Nations peoples prior to 1827 when Fort Langley was set up by the Hudson Bay Company. Lumber was the first and most important industry to the settlement which at the time was called Granville. The settlement was situated on a natural harbor, so it was selected as the terminus or final stop for the Canadian Pacific Railway. The completion of the railway made Vancouver the connecting point between the Pacific and the rest of Canada, leading to tremendous growth. Today, the population of Vancouver is around 675,000. This makes it the most densely populated city in Canada and the fifth most densely populated city in all of North America. If you've watched many of my other videos, you'll know that I think metro population is a better indicator for a city's true size, and Vancouver has a metro population of over 2.6 million, making it the third largest metro area in Canada, behind Montreal and ahead of Ottawa. The population of Vancouver is very diverse, and is sometimes referred to as the most Asian city outside of Asia. Vancouver has a large economy, and is a major tech and entertainment hub of Canada, even earning the nickname of Hollywood North because of all of the film studios. Some of the most recognizable companies headquartered there include Lululemon, Arcteryx, TELUS, and 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Vancouver is also home to the University of British Columbia, which is one of the highest ranked public universities in the world. The Vancouver skyline is massive. It's been compared to a thick forest made of glass and concrete. The city has 650 buildings, over 35 meters, which is more than every US city other than New York and Chicago. However, the city skyline is relatively short for a city of its size. If you were to average the tallest five buildings in the city, the height would be 169 meters, which is shorter than that of Edmonton's skyline, and if comparing to US cities, would be ranked as the 23rd tallest skyline, falling between New Orleans and Tulsa. The reason for the flat skyline is that there are 27 protected view corridors that limit the city's height so the buildings don't obstruct the view of the mountains. As much as I love skyscrapers, I think it's a good call to keep them short when a city is surrounded by such natural beauty. The tallest building in Vancouver is the Living Shangri-La, which stands at 200 meters or 659 feet. It was used as the fictional headquarters of the company Encon in the 2010 movie Tron. On the peninsula adjacent to downtown is one of the most incredible parks in the world, Stanley Park. The park is one of the largest urban parks in North America and is named after the same Stanley that the NHL Stanley Cup is named after. Most of the park is wooded with some trees standing over 150 feet tall. One of the most well-known aspects of the park is the path that surrounds it, which is referred to as the seawall. The seawall is probably my favorite biking path that I've personally ever been on. Within Stanley Park is the Vancouver Aquarium, which ranks as one of the top five aquariums in the whole world. It was Canada's first public aquarium, and today it is home to 65,000 animals and is the largest aquarium in all of Canada. Across the Lionsgate Bridge from Stanley Park is the Capilano Suspension Bridge Park. The Capilano Suspension Bridge stretches 140 meters long and sways about 70 meters above the Capilano River. The park also includes the curved bridge called Cliff Walk and suspension bridges connecting some of the trees. I love Art Deco architecture and Vancouver has one of the best Art Deco buildings in the world, the Marine Building. The Marine Building was once the tallest skyscraper in Vancouver, but it's most known for the intricate details of its architecture, particularly on the interior. Perhaps the most eye-catching building in Vancouver though is the Science World, which has a shiny, large metallic ball sitting on the roof. The building was built for the 1986 World's Fair and today is a science museum with interactive exhibits and a 400-seat Omnimax theater at the top of the dome. Vancouver is also home to the longest outdoor swimming pool in North America. 
Kitsilano Pool, or Kits Pool, is a gargantuan 137 meters long, which is about the same length as the Capilano Suspension Bridge. The swimming pool was originally filled by the rising tide, and occasionally they would even find octopus and mud sharks in the pool. Before the settlement that became Vancouver was named Granville, it was actually called Gastown. Today the area of the original settlement is still called Gastown. The area has maintained a much older and more historic feel than the rest of the city. Within Gastown is the famous Gastown Steam Clock. The clock was built over a steam grate to harness the power of the steam. The steam powers the clock as well as its sound production, which is why it makes a whistle sound to signal the time. Another interesting neighborhood within Vancouver is Granville Island, which has a famous public market as well as various theaters, art studios, and restaurants. And while on the topic of food, I should point out that Vancouver's famous seafood and its Asian population have combined to make Vancouver the sushi capital of North America. It's generally accepted that the famous California roll was actually invented here in Vancouver. And lastly, there are of course the mountains. Not every city is as lucky to have such a beautiful backdrop. About 20 minutes north of the city is the ski resort Grouse Mountain, which has a pretty amazing view of Vancouver. The most famous ski resort in the area is Whistler, which is a couple hours away. Well, that wraps up my video about Vancouver. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and check out some of my other videos about cities. And if you have a city you'd like to see an overview on, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.